really impressed by the analysis in, of scholars in the West about terrorism, Al-Qaeda, and now the ISIS, the books coming out on ISIS and the articles are just outstanding by think tanks, by, because people are now forced to study the realities in the region. Whereas 20, 30 years ago, people in the London and Paris and Washington were studying what they thought the Middle East was like. You know, 25, 30 years ago, people were writing about the Arab mind and why they hate us. And so it was, they were kind of imagining a lot about us, but now they can't imagine anymore. They have to write about what's actually happening. So the, the studies are really good, and I think it's clear. People use terror either when their countries are occupied and they, they fight, they have no other means, or when their f most sacred fundamental values are ravaged by their own leaders or foreign leaders or uh, somebody else. The third dimension, which translated into the Arab uprisings, which were nonviolent in the beginning, most of them, was because people had lost hope. Economic pressure, political autocracy, lack of hope, People f saw that neither they nor their kids had any chance ever of living a decent life, even if they studied and worked hard, and so that the, the autocratic uh, system, the oligarchic uh, crony capitalist systems in the Middle East that were strongly supported by the US and Russia again for many, many decades, those systems gave people no hope. And if you were not in that 20% that lived well in the Arab world, your life was destined to be poverty, marginalization, pauperization, vulnerability, and, and just a terrible life. Uh, and that's when they rebelled. But they rebelled peacefully. So I think we understand the reasons, the grievances I think are well known. Why some go to terror and others go to other things is the, is the most fascinating. Uh, and our studies and others around the Middle East have shown that it's that loss of uh, hope, that sense that you can't actually improve your life. And if you can't improve your life and you're stuck in a terrible life and you know that your six kids are going to live perpetually in poverty, uh, and then, then you do something. And that's where we have to, that's what we have to respond to.